Summer is usually when grain growers and agronomists can take a quick breather, but not this agronomist. He's also an environmental consultant and photographer, and he's conducting a summer weed survey for the Grains Research and Development Corporation. It's a two-year project designed to deliver the first record of weed species composition and distribution across Western Australia's six cropping zones. We've got 197 paddocks in total, so and we're looking at about 30 per zone to try and spread it out across the, across the whole cropping belt. From north of Geraldton at the top end of the belt, down to Albany in the south and east of Esperance. And there are plenty of weeds. Caustic weed here, that, right. that's a new one. Yep. And we've got paddy melon there. Afghan melon, roly-poly, that's the one that's really taking off in crop. Russell Crago farms at Mora, roughly halfway between Geraldton and Perth. In the, in the last few years we're starting to see um, heliotrope here and also fleabane. Um, and the roly-poly is becoming a very prominent uh, summer weed. Paddock histories will add valuable data to the survey and growers and their agronomists want to know what's coming that will adversely impact crop production. A big part of the driver is uh, trying to conserve uh, water. So even on these lighter soils in WA we're, we're keen to conserve water um, and the species shift is coming uh, more in line with the east coast as well so the weeds are appearing all over the country. Now in its second summer the survey is showing weeds are definitely on the move. Fleabane, most common in the state south, is appearing in the north while some northern species are turning up in the south. One of the really interesting things we've found is that we've got some more sort of warmer season species moving south. And one of the really important ones is button grass. It's, it's a major weed in the northern area, but I actually found some at uh, Ravensthorpe in this last survey. So that's, that's the first, first time that's been found that far south. Mulla Mulla is another summer species spreading south. Green Mulla Mulla, which is actually a native, and it's actually being found further south as well. So, yeah, and it, it, it spread, it's also spread along roadsides a fair bit by uh, roadworks and that sort of thing. Last summer's survey also indicated broadleaf weed species outnumber the grass weed species three and a half to one. The most common broadleaf weeds, you're looking at um, the melons, so both prickly paddy melon and Afghan melon. Mint weed or um, crumb weed is also very common. Then we've got caltrop is another biggie and then we've got the sort of non-seasonal weeds like wild turnip and wild radish. Wild annual ryegrass was the most abundant grass in the last survey. That was because it was sort of done late summer, early autumn. The, the main grass weeds are things like stink grass, Eragrossa ciliensis. There was a little bit of uh, panicum. There was uh, small burr grass, which tend to be in the drier areas. And there was a lot of ryegrass out there, uh, yeah, because of the way the, uh, the rainfall fell. In different cropping regions and across state borders, common names can vary, and that too is another issue. What's already come out of the WA survey is that young Afghan melon and prickly paddy melon are regularly confused. Both are very common most places and one of the first species to actually uh, germinate in uh, summer. But um, getting your herbicide mix wrong uh, because you think you've got one and not the other can be a problem. Standardised common names on chemical labelling would help reduce confusion according to agronomist David Cameron. When you read the labels, the interstate names can be a bit of an issue, so some of that naming across the, the country is a bit confusing. And we've got fleabane here. Yep. Fleabane's new to the area, and we had heliotrope. Is there any heliotrope around here? Right. The message this survey will help reinforce is that summer weed species are spreading, and when there's available moisture from late spring rains or summer storms, they'll germinate. The subsequent loss of precious moisture and valuable soil nutrients are not the only problems these weeds create for following crops. They can be a green bridge for, for disease and pests. Yeah, so things like rhizoctonia, uh, foliar diseases, 
and also we've got Russian wheat aphid about now so yeah, if you've got sort of wheat, you've got wheat aphid carry over and then you've, you've got the physical issues of uh, things like caltrop you know, with the prickly burrs creating problems for animals. They're also toxic as well so if a hungry sheep, particularly a hungry young sheep, go into a paddock with caltrop and they eat the actual caltrop leaves it will actually uh, damage their livers and kill them eventually. Below ground, we know that diseases like rhizoctonia and uh, nematodes, they really build up on uh, summer weeds. So growers uh, really try and target the weeds early to uh, reduce those below ground pests. All the collected data will be analysed for trends and provide knowledge that will help to determine the future direction of weed research nationally. In the meantime, a GRDC Summer Weed Manual for Western Australia, authored by Andrew Storey, is available, as well as an updated National Weed Guide. They're readily available and a great resource for both agronomists and growers. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.